Uh, good, good afternoon, Mark. Uh, thank you for joining with us today at Ijebu. I'm, I'm sure that a lot of our viewers will be happy to hear your experience since you've been here mm -hmm. for 10 years and you've moved around jobs as well. And so I'm sure we can learn a lot from your experience. So yeah. if you could begin uh, by giving your uh, introduction, uh, uh, we'll be very happy to yeah. start with the interview. So, great. Um, sorry. <laughs> so I'm Mark. I actually moved here in Japan around November 2014. So this year will be my 10th year here in Japan. I originally moved to Japan because a headhunter basically um, contacted me through LinkedIn if I was interested in a job in mm -hmm. Japan. That job was actually for Indeed as the first person to be hired outside of Japan, which is kind oh, of wow. funny because like when I actually got the, or when I passed everything in their job um, interview process, their final question was like, so how do we get you to Japan? Which is kind of <laughs> funny. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. So, um, right. So you need to actually, I need these documents in order to um, process the visa, which mm -hmm. they were actually very helpful with. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of funny because like they actually sent the, so basically in like, for most countries, in order to mm -hmm. get a working visa in Japan, you need a certificate of eligibility in order to get a, um, in my case, an engineering visa. So yeah. they actually sent it around June or July, I think. Mm -hmm. Then, like, um, it is also my, uh, like my mistake because I didn't actually ask for a tracking number for their, um, for that document. Mm -hmm. It was basically stuck in the um, post office of my country for more than a month. And like the oh, wow. <laughs> post office didn't really like send me anything about like any documents. So I had to actually ask the post office themselves like, hey, do you have any documentations with my name on it? Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, yeah, we have one. It's from Japan. I was like, OK. <laughs> so, yeah, it took a while to actually get it or get to Japan because of that. Oh, wow. OK. So you were the first person to be hired for Indeed. Uh, uh, not the first abroad. person to be hired. Um, it's the more like the first person hired outside Japan. Outside Japan. Oh wow. Okay, I see. Was uh being the first person hired from abroad was there something that you had to learn when you came to Japan and you had to adopt to? Yeah. Um, first of all, it was like you can't get. Or basically, like, uh, I was expecting, indeed, to actually create a payroll account on my behalf. Mm -hmm. But apparently, mm -hmm. I learned that I have to create it on my own here in Japan. Mm -hmm. So basically, it was like, in order for me to create a bank account, I need an apartment. And yeah. in order for me to create a bank account, I need a phone number. Yeah. And in order for me to get the phone number, I need <laughs> a bank account. It's right. like, um, the first thing you have to do is basically just get a... Um, apartment first or, so that you'll have your like sort of permanent address then once that's settled then it's a bit easier to get the bank account next then lastly a um phone number to make mm -hmm. to sort things out eventually mm -hmm. i see then when you first joined in 2014 were there already many international uh workers there in indeed um actually yeah probably like 30% of oh, okay. the entire Tokyo office was um, foreigners. Mm -hmm. Just actually kind of funny because like I was actually um, learning more Japanese when uh -huh. I first came to Japan in 2014. Right. Yeah. Um, because like, but yeah, but everyone in the office didn't really ask us to talk in Japanese. But like mm -hmm. I learned a lot of Japanese through them mm -hmm. because like most of the, especially my mentor was Japanese. So he was able to help me a lot with mm -hmm. like learning Japanese. Right. Then do you feel like over the past 10 years, you've learned to speak Japanese fluently? Um, Not really fluently, but I've learned to actually use it in a everyday, uh, like life to um, everyday or day to day mm -hmm. basis on how to mm -hmm. like communicate if I go like outside my home. Mm -hmm. But finally, like in terms of a professional setting, mm -hmm. I think my Japanese was actually better when I first oh, came maybe. here to Japan. <laughs> Because, like, mm -hmm. the way it goes with Indeed was, like, originally, like, there were only 30% of the foreigners and most of them 
most of them actually talk in, in Japanese, especially mm -hmm. our HR and admin. <laughs> Only oh. I think two or three of them actually talked in English. Okay. So like yeah, we had to um I had to actually ask my mentor to help out with, like Japanese translations at that mm -hmm. time too, like none of the things that most of the foreigners take for granted right now, like Google Translate was actually uh -huh. working for. <laughs> like there was no like um scan to translate text. Right. There yeah. was, I think, but this wasn't really that good. Mm -hmm. There was no conversation translation with Google mm -hmm. Translate before. So it's yeah. that's kind of hard. But as I continued with my like career with Indeed, it shifted mm -hmm. from like a 30% um foreigner um mm -hmm. employees mm -hmm. so basically i think by the time i left on 20 march 2022 at least like 90 percent of the employees were basically foreigners oh wow i had no idea okay uh -huh. so over the past years that you've been there you realized that you there is more and more less need to speak japanese in these big companies i guess um yes and no yes mm -hmm. um to be honest um the first i think a few first few months with indeed mm -hmm. um some of there was actually some people who ha tried to headhunt me oh, but um okay. they also asked if how my japanese was and they mm -hmm. wanted like someone who is more fluent um, but as right. years goes uh, went by, especially from mm -hmm. around 2015 to 2019, mm -hmm. they basically started to sort of like lower the Japanese requirement for okay. my role. Um, yes. Yeah, fair enough. I see. Okay. Thank you. And um, so moving to uh, you switching your job and now working at Smart News, um, do you have any tips or advice on changing jobs in Japan? Mm. Well, I guess the first one is actually don't change jobs like towards oh. the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like messy, especially with like um, tax returns and like mm. tax documents and processes. Mm -hmm. It's going to be difficult not only for your part, but also for the company as well. Right. So it's easier to like... If you want to change jobs, do it like before the year actually ends, or maybe two mm -hmm. to three months before the year actually ends, or mm -hmm. like just basically like the next the following year. But if you really want to like change jobs, like just go ahead. Uh -huh. <laughs> but don't right. expect to like, for example, if you're trying to get a tax return, don't mm -hmm. expect to like get it from your previous company if you're trying to actually like uh, change jobs at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. And uh, how do you like working in Smart News? Uh, so far, it's been great. Um, mm -hmm. It's been a bit challenging because, first of all, like most of my background was basically on web applications. This is actually mm -hmm. like my first time solely focused on uh, mobile applications through iOS right. and Android. And it's challenging, but it's also at the same time very rewarding for me because I mm -hmm. I'm not I don't have like the opportunity to actually do testing for both Android and iOS. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you feel that uh, people around you are very helpful if you need help? Yeah, they're very helpful. Um but I also have to like consider that like they might be too busy so as much as possible when I try to like ask for questions. I mm -hmm. provide as much context as possible so that they'll be able to actually answer all my questions precisely because like it would be also be bad for them if they if I keep on asking questions. Mm -hmm. Right. I see. And compared to Indeed, is Smart News more or less uh composed of international employees or more Japanese? Mm. So far, most of the people I've met within the office have been like mm -hmm. talking English. Okay. Like, can't really say for now um mm -hmm. because I, i've been only with smart news since like december ha, december of eighth of december actually mm -hmm. okay so it's kind of like hard for me to actually tell further right. indeed though like i actually saw it like gradually shift from like mostly japanese to mostly foreigners by the mm -hmm. time i left right okay i see then 
Uh, I would like to know uh, what what you see your uh, career goals or career plan in in Japan since that you've already mm. been here uh, for quite a long time. Do you see here? Do you see yourself staying even longer, or how do you see your future? Mm. Uh, I think I actually see myself like staying longer here in Japan. Um, mm -hmm. first of all, because like um one japan actually cares about quality <laughs> and i guess my career is actually sort of like um to be honest um qa or anyone that's related to qa isn't really looked at at a very sort of like comfortable like level between developers most okay. of the time um developers and other roles would actually look down on qa so um... like being in japan i basically I guess my career goal is to basically help improve the image of QAs, not uh, mm. for everyone else. So mm. that like basically trying to represent that like as a QA, we can also like not just do testing, but mm. greatly provide more benefits than just testing, especially for like improving the process and overall. Okay. Wow. That's an amazing, how do I say, like a drive that you have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Then um, compared to working back home, um, do you feel like that uh, execution of projects are different here in Japan? Um, not really, because um, okay. to be honest, I've never worked for a non-agile company. I mean, uh, I'm, but the first my first job in my career, it was mm -hmm. like a bit of a waterfall. But okay. during that transition, uh, during my tenure there, mm -hmm. they surely shifted to agile methodology for development. Uh -huh. Then all of the succeeding companies I've joined have already been using agile methodology mm. for development. Right. Okay. I see. Then, uh, how can I say? Um, since that you have done a kind of um, uh process for changing jobs do you have any tips for interviews or um yeah for engineers or qa testers uh to mm. be yeah to have a better image or yeah or you can talk specifically about smart news what you thought was um that you made a good impression on them mm. well i guess um uh, this is probably also coming from me who i've I guess majority of the QAs in Indie Tokyo, I actually mm -hmm. have interviewed them, to be honest. So oh. it's more on like um one, yeah, we do care, or like a company does care about your technical abilities. Yeah. But if your personality is bad, you will basically <laughs> not get the job. Right. It's basically like, yes, you can learn a technical skill, but mm -hmm. the personality will never change, even if you mm. get tired like that your personality would never change overall. Mm -hmm. It's good to actually show off your technical skills at the same time, show off that basically you can work with people at the same yeah. time to like provide help and assistance to the people within your team or immediate right. like dependencies. Okay. Yeah. So like team working skills, you should. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. But yeah, yeah, I see. I see what you mean. Okay. Then probably like mm -hmm. the last thing I could give, especially for QA, mm -hmm. is that like since um you are a QA, you're not only limited to like knowing the product. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, like the for QAs right now, there's a term called shift left, in which like mm -hmm. um testing is now trying to be moved as early as possible, mm -hmm. not just like when the developers are done with their work, uh -huh. then it's the time for QA to get in. Now there's a um, movement called shift lab in which like as early as even the design phase or getting the requirements, okay. the QA has to step in in order to sort of like make things better before it even gets like implemented. Mm -hmm. That way, like you might be able to like save some resources right. or like go things going back and forth. So just yeah. showcase that you really care about how the overall product starts mm -hmm. to the end not just like how it ends right okay oh that's an interesting movement okay i've worked with qas before but i've never heard of the movement so 
maybe I'll ask uh, the QAs that I know. Yeah. You know. yeah. <laughs> then uh, moving on to the social a uh, aspect of living in Japan. Uh, what do you like about Japan? Um, for, uh, firstly, it's the transportation. Okay. Like, um, yeah. So I came from a country in which, like, um, public transportation isn't really safe and isn't reliable. Um, mm -hmm. Here, it's like pretty safe and pretty reliable. In which, like, mm -hmm. if the time for the train is like five or three fifteen p.m., mm -hmm. the train will basically arrive at. 315 uh it will basically arrive like 314 around like that but we'll leave at 315 right and at the same time too like um it's the relative safety mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean like i'm not locking my doors at home yeah i still yeah, lock my doors but at the same time too like i'm not too worried to basically like um even in japan like sometimes you actually have to like go home late to like finish work Mm -hmm. you're not afraid to go home late because like it's relatively safe yeah back in my country by the time you reach like 10 p.m mm -hmm. where like some people already went home already so like the streets are pretty quiet uh -huh. it's actually kind of like frightening that someone might just like go to your back and like hey can I give me your wallet or something oh i see what you mean Here so in japan i've yeah mm -hmm. So now you work uh, hybrid or you work fully uh, at the office? It's hybrid. So I work okay. um, at least Monday to Tuesday in the office, then mm -hmm. probably Wednesday to Fridays at home. Okay, I see. Okay. Uh, do you not, well, if you are hybrid, maybe you don't have to take the trains or the buses during rush hour, but uh, do you mind? Or do you not mind um, at all? I don't really mind actually. Um mm -hmm. if it's rush hour or not. Um the mm -hmm. trains here are basically like if you miss like if it if you think it's if it's too full, you mm -hmm. can just like get the next That's one, true. which will probably be like what well, no, three to five minutes, which is still fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I see. Then um do what do you do in your free time? I guess on my free time is like um actually spend a lot of time like either playing video games or spending mm -hmm. time with my son oh, okay. it's like we either do like um hobbies of mine which is like art or we basically go outside to like play um football or basically mm -hmm. anything that he wants to play in the like park yeah how do you feel about raising your kid uh child in in japan so far it's been really good it's kind of challenging um, mm -hmm. actually it's kind of weird because like coming from a person who just basically learned two languages growing up which is like filipino and english mm -hmm. when i taught my son english actually mm -hmm. it's kind of confusing how to teach my son of like why things sound like this and mm -hmm. like good for a good example c-o-m-b which is comb it's like uh -huh. spelled C O M B, right? Yeah. But um bomb is spelled as B O M B, but they're not pronounced as the same thing. It's <laughs> kind of hard to actually explain why that's like that. When mm -hmm. I was teaching my son the basics of Japanese, you know, like hiragana and katakana, it's mm -hmm. much more simpler to like discuss that this is how it sounds. Oh, really? Is, yeah. Uh, I guess, yes. Yeah, one yeah. one character has one way of pronouncing. Yeah, yeah, like even like um when I asked my son how like to spell police, most kids like from maybe four to six or four to seven would spell police mm -hmm. initially spell police as P O L I S. Yeah, yeah. I because it sounds it. as a s Yeah. And when I taught my son it's no it's pronounced as spelled as P O P O L I C E. Mm -hmm. So he was confused. Why is it like why does C sound like an S? So like uh -huh. yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah fair enough okay so does your is your son more familiar with japanese so basically my son right now is going to international school mm -hmm. and as much as possible we also want him to learn um still japanese okay because i mean i already have my permit residency and eventually yeah. like he might be staying here long term okay. so it's good for him to actually still learn japanese 
right now he's very fluent in English, but he's mm -hmm. trying is like trying to improve his Japanese actually. Okay, I see. And for those viewers who may have kids, I know that there are um, kind of like this trend or more of a how do you say mindset in parents right now in Japan that international schools are better than public schools, and that there's more American school or British school. Uh, mm. to, with the school that your son is going, is it composed of very international kids, or is it a mix of Japanese and international students? It's actually a mix, but majority of them are actually non-Japanese. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. No, no. Okay, wow, cool. Okay, then uh, are there things that you don't really like about Japan, or compared to back uh, in the Philippines that you prefer this back in the Philippines than Tokyo? Mm, not really like comparing, but one thing I don't like with Japan, I think most of foreigners also like kind of dislike this aspect of Japan, mm -hmm. is that like Japan is a very by the book like yes. Uh, country. <laughs> yes. Like even if when things change drastically mm -hmm. before them, Mm -hmm. They don't really know how to react to the situation. They will actually mm -hmm. grab their manuals and check if this, like, how, if this situation actually exists in their manuals so that they can actually try to, like, solve it. And, right. like, yeah. And I've seen things like that changing. Mm -hmm. Like, a good example is, like, Hanko with mm -hmm. a lot of oh, like yeah. foreigners coming in most of the foreigners don't really have their hanko or income yeah, of course. with them yeah like some of like the financial institutions like banks have started to basically remove the requirements of mm -hmm. people requiring hankos when they open okay. bank accounts or like when they do like um, processes within the banks mm -hmm. previously like they would always ask me to always bring a hanko or income with me if i do mm -hmm. like overseers remittance or other things mm -hmm. but now as long as like your signature is recorded within their system they would just mm -hmm. gladly accept that rather than like having an income with you because sometimes having an income as well is you might actually just lose it because of how small yeah. it is <laughs> it is very small <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay have you had yeah. any trouble in terms of uh, how people are by the book and very conform conformalist uh, in your workspace um so far in my workspace i haven't actually encountered that but whenever i try to like process things like through like financial institutions mm -hmm. there's things in which like um yeah. why um for example i've already provided um my passport and residence card like um why do they need another like um I should say this why do they need another form of like identification when they right. like that's basically like most most countries or most foreigners will probably have like those two of them mm -hmm. and it's kind of um sometimes hard yeah. another thing is like <laughs> i guess it's this is i guess pretty funny and with foreigners is like you try to register through any kind of website Mm -hmm. Some websites would actually ask you to input in half width and ha full width characters. Oh, <laughs> which is kind okay. of weird because, like, yeah, you can. It will work with mm -hmm. if you're using a desktop, but yeah. if you're using mobile, you can't yeah. really like change between half width and full width on like mobile phone. Mm -hmm. And I guess yeah, <laughs> it's kind of hard to actually make that work. But mm -hmm. luckily, a lot of like sites have started to move away from them okay hopefully <laughs> all si japanese sites would move away from them yeah hopefully amazing um then maybe my last question um do you have any general tips or advice for people who are in abroad and are looking to uh, work in japan yes first of all it's like um Japan isn't like what you see in yeah, your J dramas or animes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, please get rid of that um, conception. Mm -hmm. I would really advise you to like come here for Japan for like two weeks or so. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. experience it if it's for you or not. I've heard or I've actually encountered some foreigners who thought that like Japan was for them. Mm -hmm. But after one year, they basically moved out to Japan because they realized mm -hmm. that Japan wasn't for them. Okay. That's the first one. Mm -hmm. The second one is like, um, yeah, even the language, you really have to learn like Japanese in order to actually yeah. properly live here. Yeah. And aside from that, it's not just um for living here. Um, I mentioned this earlier during the mm -hmm. interview that like initially from 2015 to 2019, mm -hmm. like Japanese wasn't really a requirement. Right. Um, they've lowered the requirements for Japanese, but during my sort of like um job hunt last mm -hmm. or one and a half year from 2021 to like 2023. Mm -hmm most of the companies have started to actually require okay. like japanese again okay it is some at some degree uh -huh. in some cases like if you're really good the company might just hire you and like like train or like mm. give you like japanese lesson yeah but if you're just average which is most of us then mm -hmm. like you really have to brush up your japanese skills okay i see oh so i oh i wonder why they started to look for Japanese people speaking. Yeah, Japanese I guess it's people. probably coming from like um a lot of like tech companies have started mm -hmm. laying off, especially in the US. Um, so some of the talents from the US or other countries have started to come back to Japan. Mm -hmm. And there's basically okay. like more um influx of talents in Japan yeah. right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Great. Um, then that's it from my side. Do you have anything else you would like to mention? Yeah, I guess, like, I mean, Japan is still a really great place. But, like, yeah, yeah. if you really want to, like, if you want to know if Japan is for you, mm -hmm. don't listen what other people said, <laughs> even from me. Just come <laughs> to Japan, experience mm -hmm. it, like, and then tell, like, you, you be the judge of that if Japan is really for you or not. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's for sure. Yes. Uh, thank you for for this great advice. And also thank you for your time today. Uh, yeah, I wish you, you the too. best of luck. Yes. Thank you. Bye.